Hey guys, it's Alex and welcome to the Geeks Table. In the previous video, we've been comparing the keyboard cases for the iPad Pro and the experience that each of them provides. And every option there had only a trackpad as a pointer device. And it makes sense because, you know, Apple includes so many gestures there, it's pretty convenient, but an external trackpad can be expensive and also heavy. That brings us to an idea of buying a mouse. So today we are going to investigate if it makes sense to buy a mouse for an iPad, and if yes, then which type of a mouse makes sense to go with. One thing actually pushed me to an idea of buying a mouse for an iPad is the two-finger right-click on the trackpad. I don't do that, I prefer clicking on the right corner of it on my Mac, but iPadOS doesn't allow you to change that option. And if you have a mouse, you actually have a physical right button that no one can take away from you. So I have three Microsoft mice here. This one is super light, it's just 100 grams or even less. This one looks fancy and this one is the cheapest that you could get. So these two don't have Bluetooth inside, so we'll have to attach a dongle. Also, I have an Apple mouse here and most expensive and advanced option is the Logitech Master MX3. So all of them have different features and different price tags. And let's see how they perform on an iPad. And the first challenge is vertical scrolling. This is essential to have it, so let's see how the mice will comply. The two Microsoft mice that have a sensor surface do the scroll with a little delay. Sometimes you have to move your fingers extra time to make it work. The cheapest mouse had no problem scrolling because of the dedicated wheel. And the Logitech mouse has this feature where the wheel keeps moving by itself. This leads to unexpected behaviors like this. So I had to mind the speed I was scrolling with. And the Apple Magic Mouse had the smoothest scroll experience, pretty much the same to what you'd have on a Mac. Now let's check out the horizontal scroll. It's not that widely used across the apps as the vertical scroll, but it can still be useful when you're on the home screen, for example, or switching between the apps or doing some video editing in LumaFusion. And here things start getting more interesting. Obviously, the cheapest Microsoft mouse has no option for the horizontal scroll, so it skips the round. The white one supports horizontal scroll on Windows, but in iPadOS it fails miserably. It simply lacks the driver to translate such gesture. The small Microsoft mouse supports the horizontal scroll, but has the same problem as with the vertical one. You need to scroll two or three times to make it actually start scrolling. And the fancy Logitech mouse has a dedicated wheel for the horizontal scroll. It works in LumaFusion, though I wasn't able to scroll precisely in case I needed one or two seconds forward, for example. An iPad went laggy when I was scrolling the home screen. And once again, the Magic Mouse was the winner here. It provided smooth horizontal scroll, and also I could scroll second by second in LumaFusion. It seems that Apple has some driver that makes their mouse work much better than the others and they won't share it with anyone to keep it that way. So, and last but not least, let's check the programmable buttons. In case you don't have the functional keys on your keyboard and you wish to have dedicated buttons to control the volume, or for example, you need a dedicated button to go to the home screen, you might be interested in a mouse that has extra buttons on it. The only one I have now is the Logitech one. To make it work, let's do a few steps. Let's open the settings, switch to the control center, then customize controls, and let's add accessibility shortcuts. Then go to the settings, accessibility, accessibility shortcut, and check the assistive touch. Then let's go back to accessibility again, then touch, then assistive touch, turn on the assistive touch, turn off always show menu, then click devices and select your device. Now you need to click on a button you wish to map and then select the function that you want. As you can see, there are plenty of them. So whenever you connect your mouse, go to the control center and enable the assistive touch. And don't forget to turn it off when you disconnect the mouse. Otherwise, you will see the annoying assistive touch menu on your screen. And finally, you can control the volume with the side buttons and switch the apps by clicking the wheel iPadOS will allow you to remap up to five buttons of your mouse. So after a careful testing, I should say if you want the best experience and smooth scrolling, go with the Apple Magic Mouse. If it's too expensive for you, then go with a simple and cheap mouse because all extra bells and whistles probably won't work with the iPad. 
And if you want an extra pair of buttons to map, then find the cheapest solution with additional buttons. And don't forget that you should feel comfortable when holding a mouse, so choose wisely. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, then hit the like button, please. And if you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. It's been Alex, and see you at the Geek's Table.